Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Sports Central. I'm Neil Duncan. We have got a fantastic show lined up for you today. We're going to talk college football right here in Polk County. We've got all three head coaches from Southeastern, Warner and Weber. So stick around, everybody, for this special edition of Sports Central. Sports Central. I'm Neil Duncan alongside Mr. Chris Caprios and this first segment is brought to us by Spectrum, a great partner of tourism and sports marketing, but uh, I'm excited about this edition of Sports Central. Yes, this is not a drill. Real live football is, is just a couple weeks away and uh, we're looking forward to it right here in Polk County and of course nationwide as well. So it's uh, that time when the everyone in America starts celebrating that football is back. That's funny you say that because I've had an exciting two days because last night I got to host uh, MC the Bar to Kiwanis Club Crying Towel event, which was uh, yeah. five high school coaches. They're about three weeks away from Friday Night Lights here in Polk County. And uh, of course today we get to talk about college football. So let's get right into it. Uh, we have Keith Bearfield, the head coach at Southeastern University joining us in this first segment. Coach, welcome back to Sports Central. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, a pretty successful season last year. Made it back into the playoffs. I think ended up with an 8-2 and two record. I know coaches don't like to look back, but let's look back for just a few minutes before we move forward. Talk to us about last year's season. Well, we, we definitely felt like we had a good season. Our only problem was that there's one team that we couldn't beat. We lost to them twice, once in the regular season, once in the first round of the, of the playoff, Lindsey Wilson, and they were they're absolutely uh, you know an outstanding team, and we played both games up there. Would have liked to have played one at, at our field, see you know, if it kind of balanced out. But, but anyway, they, they beat us twice, and uh, that's the only black mark on our schedule. Of course, uh, we would have had to make another trip up to Kentucky, but Hurricane Irma wiped that one out for us. But uh, we, we enjoyed the season. Our guys uh, played extremely well. There was a lot of great things that happened. Uh, we just uh, came up short when we got into the playoffs. Well, Coach, you mentioned uh, wanting to play another game on your field. Talk about that experience uh, for, your, for your fans, for the students. That's really changed a lot now. Uh, what, a, what a great experience it is for everybody that comes out to a game there. Talk about the game day experience at Southeastern University. Well, somebody uh, a few weeks ago asked me what was my favorite thing as far as working at Southeastern. I said game day. Mm. Uh, it's, uh, it's quite an experience. You know, they, they put on quite a show with the, with the tailgating and then with the fire walk and the, the display out of the, uh, the jumbotron and they're totally redoing all of that. They're, they're reworking that, going to be filming in the next few weeks, getting, uh, getting a whole new setup in there. Uh, but they put on quite a show. Uh, you know, when I was, when I was first hired and, and they were uh, uh, thinking all these things up, I went over to kind of sign off on the, on the design of the field. And I thought that would take five minutes. And I sat in there and had all these vice presidents and I had the athletic director and all these people. And all they talked about was that they had found a place where all these fireworks and they found smoke that would roll low and, and shoot fire out and all this kind of stuff. And, and the flags and everything, what they were going to do when we scored, when we came out and all these things. And we talked about that for 45 minutes, or they talked about it for 45 <laughs> minutes. And uh, so when they finally got to me and they said, how do you like the field? I said, it looks great. Signed off and I, and I went. Walked out, went into the, my uh, coach's office and talked to my coaches. I said, guys, I said, I don't think it matters how many games we win, but if those guys don't get to shoot off their fireworks, we'll be fired. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that, that's great. Um, you talked about it 8-2 last year. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, last year was the first year that all three of the, the uh, college football teams in Polk County were in the mid South Conference, right? But still in the Sun Division of that conference. Is that correct? Correct. We're we're in the Sun Division of the Mid South, and previously the other years it had been the strictly the Sun Conference. But we uh, we joined with uh, with the Mid South Conference and kind of formed a super conference mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, we are in the Sun Division of the uh, Mid South Conference. Now, there's three divisions within the Mid South, correct? Absolutely. There's the Appalachian, there's the Bluegrass, and of course the Sun that we're in. Okay. And then how is because you guys were named the conference champion last year, correct? We were we were champions of the Sun Division. Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, uh, going back to the previous two years, that would be three in a row, correct? 
<laughs> three in a row. Three in a row. <laughs> you don't want to look back anymore, do you? Let's no, go no, forward. No, no, let's, no, go, let's go forward. forward. Let's talk about this year's team. Uh, you know, like Chris said, it's an exciting time of year. Uh, 2018 uh, football season is upon us. Uh, let's talk about this year's roster and, and what maybe to look for from Southeastern. Well, it's going to be totally different than what I'd been used to the, the first four years that we competed. Uh, all of the originals that came in back in 2013 and teams that uh, kids that played on our 2014 uh, opening season, uh, all of those guys are, are, are graduated. They're, they're gone. We had 20 seniors last year. And the first day of spring practice, I, I thought I'd made a wrong turn because <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't recognize anybody out there on the field. And it's kind of that way this, this preseason. We have a, a totally uh, revamped roster. Uh, I'm still meeting some of the guys, getting to, getting to know them, putting names with faces because we had, we had talked to them in the recruiting process. So uh, almost every position is, is wide open. And, uh, you know, when, uh, when you have 20 seniors, and, and quite honestly, you know, we have two guys that are in NFL camps right now, Laquivianta Gonzalez, who was a first-team All-American. He's with the Los Angeles Rams. And uh, we've got Mark Myers, who is uh, with the Tampa Bay Bucks in their training camps right now. So we lost a lot of talent and we've got a lot of, lot of reworking to do on, on all aspects of our game. Well, and Coach, talk about that process of reworking everything and not, not starting over, uh, but starting with so many new players. I mean, it, how, how far into the season does it take you to learn all those names? Are you still saying, hey, number uh, 64, uh, halfway through the season? <laughs> well, it better be next week for me uh, because the guys who, who you know the names to, they're, they're probably going to be the players <laughs> right? and uh, the ones that stand out and they rise to the top. And that's basically what we have to find out, you know, the next couple of weeks is, you know, the guys that are going to, to rise to the top and, and earn those spots and, you know, become the household names that we were used to talking about the last few years. Come to Jarrell Reynolds, who rushed for over 4,500 yards, and Jonathan Pierce, who was the, the starting quarterback uh, for four years, and uh, the Mark Myers and the Viviante Gonzalez's. You know, we, we have a lot of work to do, and uh, it's, it's, quite, it's quite a task because we have an extremely competitive division, and we have an extremely, extremely competitive conference. I feel like the X is on your back. Is the, is the target on your back? Because obviously winning the division last year in the conference uh, a couple of years before that, uh, I know it's a different roster, but obviously there's been a buildup to Southeastern being at the top of that. Do you think that there's a, a mark on the back, and does the team feel that? Well, I don't necessarily think the team feels it because most, most of these guys, they they've there. never been here before. <laughs> they, they're not, they, they have any realization. But, uh, you know, I think any, any program and any coach – uh, that's uh, really competitive, you know, they want to be in that spot. And mm -hmm. in, in that regard, yes, you know, I think uh, to an extent there's a, there's a target, but it's whoever's in that uh, position, you know, gets that designation. I'd rather be in that position than be in the other position. Than worrying about whether fireworks are going to go off or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and like Neil said, you, you don't like to look back. Coaches really don't like to look ahead either, so we may not get a straight answer from any of you on this one today. But uh, looking at your schedule, I know the, the most important game is the next one, but any any games you're, you're circling on that schedule other than the first one or tough stretches that you see? No. <laughs> <laughs> and we're no, done. Let's no. move to the next one. I mean, you know, for, for, for us, I mean, I mean, seriously, you know, yeah. if, if we were talking last year, that might have been the case because we, we knew what we were working with. We were just trying to build depth around the guys that mm -hmm. we knew that were coming back and in, in the, the, the core of the team. You know, right now for us, you know, we have, we have got to find players to line up in, in the 11 starting positions on each side of the ball and in special teams and find out real quick, we'll find out on August 25th, if they're good enough to win a football game. And there's a lot of questions between now and then, and that's what we've got to focus on. And we, we, we can't afford to think about any, anything else. I think I asked this each year, and I'll probably ask it of all three coaches today, how important or how much of an advantage is it to be in Polk County? With the amount of talent that is playing right here in the backyard, uh, does that give you an advantage, or all three schools an advantage to be able to recruit so much locally? Well, you know, I'm sure uh, when you talk to the other coaches, they'll have, you know, a similar, similar answer. But the places that I've, that, I've, that I've coached in different states, I've coached, you know, in the high school in Missouri and in the high school in Oklahoma. And we were, but we were successful there. We, we made it to the playoffs. We won conference championships. 
but being here at South at Southeastern, being in, in Polk County, uh, you can you can take uh, a, a pencil and move it out of what would be 50 in a 50 mile radius and draw draw a circle, and you will see more college prospects and bona fide football players in that 50 mile radius than I would see in years in Oklahoma and Missouri. Really? Yes. So so it's uh, uh, it's a great it's a great recruiting field. You know, I made my living in Oklahoma and Missouri coming to Florida. <laughs> and like I've told everybody, it's a lot easier convincing people to stay home where your family can watch you play almost every weekend than it is to go out and have to deal with snow in Missouri and Northwest Oklahoma in the winter time. It doesn't look quite like the sand on the beach. <laughs> but I tried to convince them of that. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a good selling point. Is our We sell that as well yeah. in the jobs that we do. But at the same time, Coach, that's got to be a blessing and a curse because, like you said, there is so much uh, recruiting talent. You're competing against pretty much every school in the nation for those players in that 50-mile radius, right? Oh, absolutely. And uh, and not, not only all the schools in the nation, but, you know, the the schools that you're competing against here in the state, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, that's a great challenge, but it's also a great opportunity, and we try to focus on the opportunity. Well, Coach, we wish you good luck and continued success, and uh, we look forward to another great season out of Southeastern. Um, real quick, uh, five home games. Uh, homecoming is uh, October 27th against Edward Waters, uh, but as you said, there's five opportunities to see quite a show out there at Southeastern. Well, actually, we've added an opportunity because uh, on September 8th, I believe, okay. yep. we play yep. uh, University of God's Chosen. We added that. We added oh, that so game. Six, yeah. so, nice. So that's that's one, one, more, one more opportunity to come out and see the fireworks. Well, fantastic. Well, good luck to you, and uh, hopefully we'll see you later on in the season. Thank you very much. Pleasure right, to be thanks, here. Thanks for coming. All right. We're going to take a break here, but we're going to look at some footage from Legoland's The Force Awakens. It's a new uh, attraction there with over 2,000 yeah. Star Wars models. So take a look at this action. Chris and Neil will be right back here on Sports Central. Force Awakens cluster that you see behind me, we actually, uh, we as model builders, model designers, came up with the idea and actually pitched this one to LucasArts. They in turn looked at it, inspected, made sure we were holding to their standards, and uh, they approved it, and now we brought it to life. And once the design is approved, we end up getting the digital file as builders, and pretty much just have to try to recreate it in real life. For the build, we, we definitely spent over 4,000 hours just bringing all of these models uh, from start to finish, bottom to top, with over 500,000 pieces really just put into this cluster to make sure these models are, are pristine. I actually worked on the finalizer amongst all the other projects. I also worked on the Crash Star Destroyer. So overall, we all just kind of split, split amongst ourselves the models we made. It goes through a pretty lengthy process. We'll start with, you know, some desk research, making sure we know what exactly the product it is that we're, we're supposed to be designing and then building. And then from there, it'll go to a designer. The designer then uses these research pictures to make sure they're finding every little detail that they can and making sure we're really bringing that model to the best detail that we could as possible. And then from there, it gets handed off to a builder where they, they get to choose the pieces and make sure that we really bring it back to life. Usually the designer, if it, if it has special pieces in it besides just brick, uh, usually the designer will include it in their designs and 
usually that's how we know how much of what type we need. On the, on the finalizer, we used about 10 builders per section. So you'll actually see a top half and a bottom half. So we had 20 builders just building the finalizer. So the finalizer is actually one of the largest Lego models that we've created at the Lake Wales uh, production facility. It's over 16 feet long. If it weighs over a thousand pounds in Lego bricks. And it's, it, it took a long time to build that thing. Depending on the model, some things can be handed out separate, um, but like the finalizer is uh, one whole thing, so we pretty much just like work in sections, trying not to run into each other, but you really have to learn how to work as a team. Um, but our leadership team helps distribute which projects we get, but overall it's very fair and we mainly have to work as a team at the end of the day. This is Star Wars, you know? That, that alone, Lego, Star Wars, that's gonna make it really special. And what, what, we, what you'll really see here is the animations. You'll see uh, Ray and Finn getting chased by a TIE fighter. You'll see the Lugga Beast trying to steal BB-8. You'll see Kylo Ren walking out from his ship. You know, it's, it's a really exciting thing to see these Lego models being brought back to life. What you'll see here is the beginning of the, very, of the Force Awakens movie with Kylo Ren attacking Tuano Village, chasing Poe to get the plans to find Luke Skywalker. As you can see, uh, the movie actually then progresses throughout all of the scenes that you see here, in which you'll meet, see Rey finally meeting BB-8 and rescuing her from the Lugga Beast. And then from there, it progresses to where they finally get captured and they're actually trying to escape from the finalizer, which you'll see here. It has over 300,000 pieces and took a very long time to build. And then from there, you'll see the scene progresses with a little TIE fighter going into the larger TIE fighter of Finn escaping, crashing onto Jakku, and then finally meeting up with Rey and BB-8 here in this scene where they are still being chased by the First Order. and then escaping on the Millennium Falcon to then be chased through by the TIE Fighters through this crash Star Destroyer right here. Well, I actually saw an ad online one day, two years ago, and I was like, okay, this will probably be a lot of hands-on building, lots of art, which are two things I love. So I just applied, um, I got it assessed a couple weeks later, and I got the job, so it was just really a perfect fit. Every project is for something different. You go in the next day, you never really know what you're working on until the next day. There's a lot of creative problem solving, I guess you could say, um, because yes, we have a file and a design. We know how it's supposed to look at the end, but we have to figure out as builders what pieces to use and how to accomplish it. So it's a two-way problem solving road. Here at Legoland Florida, uh, we actually have multiple different scenes from multiple different movies, and the newest one being The Force Awakens behind me. However, you will see The Empire Strikes Back, The Phantom Menace, uh, Return of the Jedi, every single main saga Star Wars movie you will see here at Miniland Florida.
everybody. Welcome back to the second segment of Sports Central, and it's going to be brought to us by Hampton Inn Lakeside Village and a good partner of tourism and sports marketing. We certainly appreciate them. Um, some good footage there That's from cool. Legoland. That was cool. Yeah. Are you a big Star Wars fan? I, you know, I'm old enough to yeah. remember it when it was out. I, can, I don't think I've seen a full movie of any of those, but I've seen a lot of most of them. So. I think I've seen yeah. them all. I mean, I mean, uh, I'm not like over the edge with yeah. it like Mark Cuddy is. That wasn't you in one of those costumes that we just saw that you weren't playing Darth Vader there? <laughs> I don't think that okay. was me. Speaking of Darth Vader, <laughs> I don't know. So there's no segue. There's no segue. We're just going to go ahead and welcome our second guest to the show. Of course, we're talking about college football right here in Polk County, and uh, we certainly want to include from Weber, Coach Kelly Scott. And Coach, welcome back to the show. Dang, nice to be here. Thank you, guys. Yeah. All right. Thanks, thanks for, for coming. coming. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're done with them already? Co listen, hey, I don't know, if you, know, the, I don't know okay. if you know the history there, but Coach Scott has never missed an opportunity to take a shot at me. So I wanted to get one in first there because the rest of this interview is going to be how he's going. Well, you talk about uh, college football in Polk County, the longest standing head coach, right, of, of the schools in Polk County? Is that uh, true? you got to be, right? you yeah. got to be the true. Probably in the state. longest tenured in the state? Of all colleges. Really? Think about well, it. What if year it's, is it's not true, it should be. What year is it? How many years? Hold on, I've been, I don't know, at my age, I don't remember things <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach, uh, uh, talk to us about, you know, of course, we, we co had Coach Barefield on, and we know coaches don't like to look back too much, but let's set up the scene for this year's team by looking back at last year's team. What do you have coming back off of, it was what, a 5-4 and four campaign? 5-4 and four campaign. Uh, defensively, we return about everybody. And you had a strong defense last year already. Yeah, we, we've done really well defensively. Right now it's about us putting an offense together that's going to score points. Mm -hmm. You know, I always say the best thing my defense does is drink water on the sideline. Because <laughs> if they're not out there nobody, and we got the ball, nobody's scoring points. That's right. So uh, the big thing is here is getting an offense that can control the ball. Uh, I think we've got the nucleus to do that right now. But, you know, we're only two days into it. I've only been in T-shirts. I don't really know what I've got either yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but we got a bunch of young men returning. Uh, the, you know, the thing about us, we've been going so long, it's just a gradual change. Mm -hmm. And so every, everything's pretty good. I, I like the group of guys I'm working with right now. How difficult is it? Because obviously when you go out and recruit and you, you go after the pieces you think you're going to need or going to fit into your system, and then you get what you get, and then you come out to, to fall practice or camp or whatever, how difficult is it to say, okay, this is what we thought we needed, and now we see this is what we have, and how do you mold that together? How difficult well, is that? You know, I, I think it even goes back to when we did the high school jobs. You, you got to put your best players on the field. Mm -hmm. So really, it's it's finding things that fit your young men, um, put them in a position to be sec successful on the field. And I think that's what coaching is really all about. Uh, not everybody's going to fit that mode. Right. Well, hey, I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead. No, as we talk about uh, football in Polk County, now there's some natural rivalries have developed. Uh, how, how much fun is that for you? Oh. Like we said, well, you've, been, you've been the longest tenured head coach, at least in Polk County. Now you've got these schools that are kind of natural rivalries. It's well, going to make it fun. Yeah, it, it makes it fun. And I, and I really think what's happened here, you know, we started back in 2002. Nobody saw the big picture of what it would do for young people in the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've probably had over 300, 400 guys graduate with degrees since we started this thing. That changes things. We've even had guys that Neil's been foolish enough to hire. <laughs> they learned quick and got out of here. I know some of those guys, yeah. <laughs> to get away from me or to get away from you? <laughs> Probably both. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, well, they came to Neil's second, so yes, he's oh, yeah. the one that chased them off. They, well, they apparently didn't learn their lesson <laughs> if they came to us. <laughs> well, let's talk about the team. Uh, obviously, as Chris was mentioning, as you did, Coach, the defense is strong. You talk about uh, adjusting the system a little bit to the players that you have available to you um, and a little bit of adjustment with the offense. How is that going to look this year? So if we go to a Weber game, what kind of offensive set uh, are we going to see? I, I hope we can run the ball about 70% of the time okay. and throw when we have to. I worked with an old coach back when I first started. He said, you know, really offense is pretty simple. Go where they ain't. And so that, that's kind of the way we're going to kind of look at it. You know, you just got to attack the teams you're playing, and hopefully right. you've got enough in your arsenal uh, that you can attack their weak spots. I asked the last coach this. I'm going to ask all the coaches this. Schedule. You mentioned weak spots just a second ago. Are there any weak spots on your schedule? Anything you're looking forward to I, uh, other I, than game one? I, I'm going to tell you what. It, it, I really enjoy every game. Yeah. Um, none really stands out. I mean, Weber and Warner are always going to have their rivalry. Southeastern, uh, any school in Florida 
there's a lot of bragging right with with the guys. Mm -hmm. So that's always important. But you know, the longer you do this, you just enjoy the games. Yeah. Every one of them's pretty cool. When you look yeah. back, you know, I've, I'm almost to 40 years of doing this now, mm -hmm. and it's been a heck of a ride. I really enjoy just every game's pretty cool. 40 years, really? Yeah. You look so young. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I told hey, you, you know, I was going to be on the offense today, not the defense. <laughs> you know, it's like the guy, to, the old guy, told me the other day. He said, "You know, coach, life's like a toilet paper roll." I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "Well, the closer you get to the end, the faster it goes." <laughs> <laughs> we could just give him the whole hour. He's I was trying to like just do a stand-up routine. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get back to and we, we we talked about this in the first segment. I want to ask you about that, and of course, we're going to ask Coach Schaefer as well. Talk about you know, Coach. Last segment was talking about the proximity to circling the 50-mile map or. Uh, on the map, talk about the, the recruiting hotbed. It's got to be great for you to be able to, on a Friday night, stay in the county and go look at a kid and Saturday be at your place. Yes, uh, you know, Polk County football is awesome. But if you look around the center part of the state, right. there's so many good teams mm -hmm. and so many good players. You know, I, I tell coaches all the time, I says, Boy, if you could travel the state and see all the talents out there, you would be amazed. Now it's finding the right guys that fit your program whether it be academically or athletically, and putting those pieces together so you have a good fit. I mean, because the bottom line is, uh, if a guy can come and play a game he loves and walk out with a college degree, that's pretty neat. You know, that's, and that's really what we're trying to do. Yeah, fantastic. Well, um, I think we, we talked about the defense was ranked fifth nationally last year, have everybody back. Um, did the defense last year create a loss? Was there scoring on the defensive side of the ball, or they, were they setting your offense they up They scored for a little bit. They scored a little bit and set the offense up. Uh, you know, the guy, the, the, what's fun for me is the guy that is our defensive coordinator now. Uh, he was in our first recruiting class. Uh, really? I got him at 18, <laughs> and he's been with me for now 17 years. Wow. And, and the longevity and the, and the guys buying into the program mm -hmm. and what we're trying to accomplish. Um, as we look at our program at Weber, uh, I think we're up to 18 head high school coaches here in the state of Florida. Wow. Um, a bunch of guys have went to college, a bunch of guys are still assistants working their way up. But, you know, finding that passion for the game, you know, I, I still think it's the greatest game in America. And it teaches more, more things than, than just the game. It's about life and what we're trying to accomplish. So. That's pretty you said you don't want your defense scoring points. You want them on the sideline drinking water anyway, yeah, right? That's so exactly they don't need right. to score points. <laughs> well, it yeah. makes the offensive game plan a lot easier. Again, you've been with him a while, right? <laughs> he doesn't listen. <laughs> Never have. My mom has said that quite a few times. Uh, second year in the uh, Mid-South Conference. Talk about that and what that's done to be in that super conference, if you will. Well, the, the biggest thing for us is just scheduling. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a time that I was flying to California, yeah, Oregon, yeah. just to find ball games. And to have a 10-game schedule now where I'm not on the phone, you know, every day trying to get a hold of people is awesome. I think the competition, the Mid-South probably in the NAI is probably the strongest conf conference in the nation. So being part of that gives us instant credibility and gives us a chance to battle for those playoff bursts and eventually national championships. Well, Coach, before you all hit the football field, you do have a pretty cool event coming up. Uh, you'll be uh, tearing up, probably literally tearing up the golf course. On uh, August 18th, you have your, uh, your Weber Football Golf Classic coming up as well, right? Yeah, we've been doing that now for about 10 years, and really it's just a chance to come out and have a little fun. You, know, you don't even invite him back. He's anymore, never been right? invited back. Yeah. yeah. I heard. I heard the stories from yeah. the last time. I was starting my own excavating company and just happened to be doing it in the fairway. Well, when I say fairway, I mean in the woods, but yeah. same, same thing. Yeah. Now, it's, a, it's a lot of yeah. fun. Uh, I think we've got 19 foursomes right now that uh, they've been over five years of coming back every year. Awesome. And, and that's kind of what we want. We want family. And yeah, that event's open to anyone to, to yeah, register? Yeah, anybody's. Get on our website, oh, everything's yeah. posted. Except I, for I me. appreciate that. Except, See, except for you me. actually look at things. That's that's I, really good. I know, yeah. <laughs> I said one of us has to. That's why I'm here, just to checks and balances. That's all it's about. Right? Hey, you guys go ahead. I'll just sit over here. Don't worry about me. <laughs> well, I, one thing before we, we've got to go to break here, but I, I think it's neat with, with the age of technology and, and the way people get their information or don't get their information, you can turn off your notifications. So if you're a Gator fan or a Florida State fan or a Miami or whatever, record, you can record the game 
but you can still go. You don't have to drive two and a half hours yeah. or four hours or five hours to see college football. And there's really good football amongst these three teams. No, it is really, really a good thing. Uh, and if you ever come to a game, it's, it's really funny. People that come to the game, it seems like they're always coming back. Yeah, they right. kind of get hooked on it because, one, um, you know, you go to Florida State, you don't get to talk to a player. Right. You know, Weber, Southeastern, or Warner, you know what? You can actually walk down and get to know a kid. Mm -hmm. And you got that little personal buy-in. So to me, it's small college football. If you haven't been around it, it's a really neat thing. When you look at the way things have grown in Polk County, not only with college football, but now you have a professional basketball team to go along with spring training with the Tigers and Lake of Flying Tigers and the Tropics and, and all that. So you talk about the entertainment. Mm -hmm. College football yeah. is certainly part of that You think group. this would, might be a re retirement community someday? <laughs> well, you're closer than I am. Oh! <laughs> I went back. Coach, any predictions that I know you will not make <laughs> for I'm the gonna, season? I'm going to tell, I'm gonna tell you what. I'm, I can predict this right now. We're going to play as hard as we can, there you and go. we're going to win as many as we can. There you go. All right. Well, Coach, as always, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show, and we appreciate your time. We know you're in the middle of – all three of you are in the middle of getting ready, and we do appreciate you coming in. Thanks, Coach. It's a pleasure. Thank you, guys. All right, well, recently we formed a partnership with the Aquamaze. Of course, they were part of the historic Cypress Gardens water ski team, and they're actually going out on the water to do some feature packages around Polk County. Let's take a look at this one. Chris and will be right back here on Sports Central. with the Florida Aquamaids and we're going on our very first adventure and we're on the Living Waters pontoon cruises with Rue Denton and it's exciting because we're right here in Lake Summit and we're going to go through the chain of lakes which there's 24 chain of lakes right here that are all connected but in Central Florida there are over 560 lakes so whether you come to Winter Haven for the chain or you experience other lakes in Central Florida, you're going to have a great time. Welcome to the uh, Living Water Pontoon Boat Cruises. We're cruising with the lovely uh, Aqua Maids today and we're, we're cruising into Pirate Cove. This is where they have the ski show. They've had a ski show here every day since 1940. Can you believe that? We offer the sunrise cruise, which all the birds are nesting and feeding early in the mornings. And um, you've got your beautiful um, lily pads over here with the little yellow lotus flower on it. That's your whole ecosystem right here, you know? You have your worms and crickets and minnows and shiners and flies. and and snakes and alligators and birds and they all live in the ecosystem right there and it's just so beautiful. But these are world famous islands. You know Johnny Weissmuller, he was the first Tarzan. He filmed back in here on these islands and um, the Mike Douglas show, he filmed here. Um, a couple of scenes from Gilligan's Island were filmed over here on this island right here and um, there's a lot of rich history here on Lake Summit. Now we're in Lake Summit right now, which is a real deep lake, good clean lake. A lot of these lakes, you know, they hit the aquifer, so they're real cool and clean and um, good fishing, good swimming lakes. As you guys know, it does get hot out here in the summer, out on the living water on the chain. So um, not only am I a tour guide, a historical tour guide and boat cruise driver, but I'm also a great water boy. You ladies, would y'all like some water? Awesome. Here we go. You're welcome. My pleasure. If you guys look at that bridge, that's the original Highway 17. That was built around 1922. I used to ride my bike over that bridge when I was a kid in the 80s. and. My grandmother lived in Eagle Lake. It's just a little two-lane two road, highway. But um, that's part of the rich history. And one of our Aquamaids, Sherry, she's a world champion skier. And um, it's such an honor to have you aboard our boat today. Cheers. 
to the Aquamaids. I'm passionate about the chain. I know the Aquamaids are passionate about the chain. And um, we love it out here. It's a wonderful resource. And um, you guys come see us. Living Water Cruises provides several services that you may enjoy. One of them is to see the Legoland Ski Show from the water. What a great way to see the ski show. Another thing is you can reserve a cruise for the sunrise or a sunset and see the beautiful skies right here on the chain. And thirdly, you can get a reservation made for you to enjoy a lunch or a dinner right here at Harborside. And you can see the beautiful lake and enjoy delicious food. And we're going to enjoy some appetizers at Harborside. We hope you've enjoyed this pontoon cruise with Living Water. Hey everybody, welcome back to the third segment of Sports Central. Of course, that is brought to us by Legoland Florida Resort. Of course, we saw them a, a few minutes ago with yeah. their new uh, Star Wars exhibit out there. Cool yeah. stuff. Yeah, and a cool new partnership like we just saw with the Aquamades. Mm -hmm. They are experts on the water for, uh, for Central Florida. Of course, over 550 lakes in Polk County, so they're going to show us and uh, our, our viewers how to have fun on those lakes and get out there and enjoy them. They talk about all these attractions we have in Polk County, and of course we're talking about college football today, and that's an attraction every Saturday. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you look at Legoland Florida Resort, the attraction, but the lakes, the fishing, the the, the water life, if you will, it's, it's unmatched. Yeah, yeah, you go all over the country and you hear people talking about the, the chain of lakes. They know it, they know, and that's what they want to do when they go on vacation is get on the water, have fun. Absolutely. So that's what we have. Well, in our last segment, we had uh, Kelly Scott, who was the head coach of the Weber International. But uh, I believe, unless I'm incorrect, the first coach in Weber <laughs> was uh, Coach Rod Schaefer. Now he's at Warner, so he's at the rival school now and has <laughs> been. Uh, but Coach, welcome to Sports Central. We appreciate you coming back on. Well, I appreciate it. Neil, I'm not going to badger you like uh, Kelly did. <laughs> I, I, I spent most that. of my time, you know, they changed the sidewalks because Kelly's rear end kept hitting the crack. So we had to do it. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. Well, now now we're going. <laughs> and he's not here to say anything. That's right. That's he's already gone. That's we've why been, we put you last. He we've might been be, friends uh... for 40 years. He's been my defensive coordinator when I was at Lake Wales. And, of course, we started the programs. Like right. He went over as my defensive coordinator at, at Weber when we started 18 years ago. So. Let's talk about that because... You know, it's got to be a thing, a source of pride for you because, you know, now there's three teams in Polk County playing mm -hmm. college football. Mm -hmm. and, and when you guys were starting Weber and getting things going, this was kind of your vision, hoping that there was more opportunities for these young student athletes to play right here at home. Well, that, that's fantastic because I realized we had no small colleges at all. When I came down yeah. from Michigan, we had lots of colleges in Michigan, junior college. So what do you do with 98% of your kids in your, on your football teams in high school? Yeah. You know, if you've got two Division One kids, you're lucky. Yeah. But... Uh, so what do you do with the rest of them? They have to go to Kansas or Missouri or Michigan to play, and your parents don't get to see them. So our goal was to start small college football and to, to, see, it, to see it grow now is, is amazing. And uh, uh, now, now the thing is recruiting is even tougher now because now you've got seven teams right in the area that are, that are in the conference, from that, and we have six right here in Florida, so it, and there's other teams coming. So it's exciting for me to see that. That, that was kind of a goal. And, uh, and it is neat to listen to Kelly talk because we remember those days when we had the Shed Gang. And uh, you guys don't remember when we started that program. We, no one would play, would play us because no one wants to play Florida athletes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so we played Southeast Louisiana that first year and Valdosta. I mean, you're talking <laughs> freshmen going over. It was make it, take it. I'd still be in, in uh, <laughs> South, Car or, or South Louisiana <laughs> and, and, uh, and they'd still have the ball. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a, it, it's gone a long way, and it's been a great. And Kelly's done a good job. When I left and went back to high school, to coach my son at Lake Wales, uh, I was able to name him the head coach, and he's done a great job. While he's been there and kept it going. Well, now it's kind of come back to bite you that you started all this, and now you've got to recruit against these other schools that you, your yeah. goal was to, to get started in this. <laughs> and really, you would think that, but really the recruiting process against us and, and Weber really isn't as big as you think it is, basically because we're a liberal arts school, mm -hmm. and they're a business school. So we have business too and liberal arts. So in some ways we have an advantage, but uh, 
And once again, Southeast is the team right now for us both. We, we, like I said, Kelly and I play golf all the time and we're together all the time and I, he's like a brother. We want to beat his rear end anytime we play him and he wants to beat us. But really, be honest with you, Southeast is, uh, is where we have to go and that's what we have to be to win the conference. I think Coach Scott brought up a, a great point. I wouldn't say that very often because that's not usually the case. But I thought he brought up a great point. Cause he, I'm getting him yeah. down too. He's not here uh, about you know, it's a great opportunity and it's great football. You know, and and the experience. You know, and it's one of those things where he said if you get somebody out there one time, then they're kind of hooked on whether it's Weber or Warner or Southeastern. Mm -hmm. You agree with that assessment that just getting uh, them out there is, is probably the biggest challenge because after that it sells itself. Well, that's it. It's If you just get them out there and see the game, we have great athletes. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what? A lot of kids are there just because they wanted to go to small school. And guess what? We get the tweeners. You know that Division One stuff and five-star athletes. I got news for you. If you get enough money, I can make you a five-star athlete. Yeah. But, you know, but we get some really good athletes that could play at any level. And they don't meet, maybe they don't meet the profile of what they're supposed to mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. But you get out there and see that we have great football and everything's relative. And so they see that. And like you said, with, like Kelly was saying in the last segment, you go down the field afterwards and, and, and see the kids and they can get autographs. They can do stuff. And the parents like it. It's, it's a lot closer than you are in a big stadium. I think it's an, an exciting brand of football. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's been fun. Well, I've asked both the other coaches about their schedule. You you have a tough one, but you get both the, the rival schools, you get the local schools at home this year. So how, how did you work that out? Well, first of all, <laughs> we don't work out schedules at all. They're sent to us because we have the toughest schedule in NIA in the entire nation because wow. we open up with Georgetown, who lost in the quarterfinals, to Lindsey Wilson. And then we play Renhart, the third game, who was in the, in the national championship game. So we get, to, we get to play those in the first three games. And so that's a bear. But at the same time, it's kind of exciting. Yeah. You know what? You've got, to beat a, you've got to beat them anyway. So if you're going to win a national championship, so we find out early where we're at. And uh, our kids aren't in yet. They come in on Saturday. Our, our dorm was being, uh, we just were growing so fast mm -hmm. at Warner that we can't keep up. Last year, we had a waiting list to get in of 41 kids. This year, we'll probably have a waiting list of 141. Mm -hmm. We just built a new dorm two years ago. We got another dorm coming, another one on the road. So, you know, good things are happening. I think one thing about Warner that I, that I like being there, and I love, you know, I, 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 you know Weber is always going to be close because we started that, mm -hmm. but we really developed the whole person. And for me, that's kind of my life has been that way. We're developing the whole person, not just, you know, spiritually, mentally, and physically. And we have higher standards than many of the schools. You have to have a 2.0 to play at ours. You can't have a 1.5 that first year. You can't have a 1.5 that second year. You gotta have a 2.0. Uh, now, I'd like it to be a 1.75 that first year to a 2.0 because when I, you come to, to Warner, you're gonna graduate. Mm. And uh, when kids have 1.5 for two years, it's tough to get the grades up to graduate. Right. And so, uh, I like our standards. Uh, it hurts some in, in retainment, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, I think that it's it's a great situation the way things are going, and we got to just keep working at it. Well, Coach, uh, from from everything I've read and talking to you off air, uh, seems like you're in a similar situation that uh, Coach Scott is. Uh, strong defense coming back, maybe finding out some some new. I know you have great receivers, but finding uh, your way on what the offense is going to be. Uh, talk about this year's roster and kind of how you're you're molding that clay. I know they're not in yet, but how how are you going to approach? Well, that? Well, you know, obviously William Bethel's coming back, and he's a preseason All-American and on the on the NFL scout deal, so he's going to be good on defense. You know, the problem is we got to replace DJ Davis, who was our quarterback for four years, and DJ was the conference player of the year two years ago. Last year he was hurt almost the entire year. Last year was a disaster for us, but. Um, Replacing him, we've got a couple of uh, good guys, Ryan, Ryan Gro and, and Tom, Andre Tommy are coming back, but we have six quarterbacks that are going to compete. And just like the, all the coaches say, I'm going to tell you right now, we graduated my first senior class. But you got to understand that senior class was a senior class that I recruited when I took the job at the end of April. <laughs> and so uh, our JV program was phenomenal last year. They were undefeated, beat a lot of good-sized schools. and. Uh, so it's going to be fun to see the competition, but uh, we got to find that person, whoever that quarterback is, who is it going to be? I, I don't know. I, I know obviously your seniors always have an opportunity to compete, and they're juniors actually. Um, but I'm looking forward to see what happens. And so, you know, I, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen until we see them, right. but we've got some really good athletes coming in. And like you said, you're going to find out in those first few games what they're, what they're made of. But, so that's kind of the advantage of that schedule, but then also 
uh, there's some, some downside to that as well. The big thing is injury. See, last year we had 31 injuries. Hmm. Our entire offensive line at the end at one time or another were out for some games. And part of that had to do with the, with the schedule with, the, with the, obviously the hurricane. Hmm. Here we, we opened up with Campbellsville, had to go down to Campbellsville, ended up losing that game in the, in the last quarter, a game we thought we should have won. Came back, we're out for two weeks. And then all of a sudden we come back, we have two days of practice, we have to go back to Alabama and play a game. Ended up losing that one in the fourth quarter. And then I thought our attitude kind of changed a little bit and we got kind of beat up in that area. Mm -hmm. but, um, but you know what, there's always excuses for losses. And you know what, there is no excuse for it. You just saddle up and you gotta do it right. I think our attitudes are gotta be better and, uh, and I'm excited about working with this group. Well, that's fantastic. Um, anything that uh, sticks out in your mind uh, this not necessarily this year, but just from the ex experience of coaching, like what what are some of those best memories? Because you were part of starting Weber, and you've been at the high school level, and you know how special Polk County is when it comes to you know. I know you had some good runs with the Highlanders, and now Warner. What give us a couple of those special memories? Well, obviously that we ended up playing for the net, the conference championship the first year we started the program. After you know that was fun, and then we should have won that game and ended up losing by well, missing an extra point or actually <laughs> a field goal in triple overtime. And then two years ago, not last year, the year before, so that's part of the reason this last year was kind of disappointing because we had everybody back. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, we had Southeastern. We, we we went down and we're ahead of them, and then got a field goal block with no time on the clock, and then mm -hmm. lost in triple overtime. So we got to stay out of triple overtimes. Yeah, or we'd have won a conference, so we could have won the conference <laughs> two of the last four years. Right. So those were exciting times. My biggest excitement, obviously, as Kelly said, is see these kids <clears throat> get an opportunity to stay in Florida, mm -hmm. to play. And for me personally, to look around the state and say, we've done what we set out to do. And President Yentis had a vision, you gotta give President Yentis credit when he was at Weber, had a, had a vision that, let's start football. And I told him, it's gonna cost you $2 million. Well, let's just do it and see what happens. And, uh, <laughs> and now to see teams coming in, that's, a, that's the exciting thing for me. I, I always like to be a builder. Now, whether, wherever Warner's going, it's gonna be pretty good. We're still in the, in the uh, just the beginning of this program. We're not here 18 years. Right. But I'll tell you what, our new locker room's going in. It is phenomenal. Unfortunately, because of the rain, they had, we're three weeks behind, so my kids are going to be like the old days back at, at, at Weber, where we're going to be in two double wides while we're waiting for four weeks for it to get finished. But it is, it is bigger than our gym, and it is our new weight room will be 4,300 square feet. And it's really something, and we've been meeting with uh, people about getting the stadium built up in front of the school. That's one of our goals. So there's great things happening. For me, it's hard not to win all the time. You know, it's just hard, but you know, it's, uh, I think we're making progress and I, and I think that we've got great kids that are graduating and they're turning, they're, they're, they're getting great jobs. 98% of the people graduate get a job within three weeks. So I'm excited wow. about that's, that. That's the most wow. important. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, look at Chris got one saying, so you know, anybody. Get <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I had to do it. I, 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 I Neil, I should have said that. No, no, you had it right the first time. <laughs> I, I, Neil, no, I, no, no, yeah, I told him I wouldn't say that. See what that. happens when you try to be Coach Scott? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, Coach Shaver, thank you so much. Good luck this season. Uh, we look forward to uh, having you back on the show but uh, again congratulations not only on this team but on what you've done for college football in Polk County. Yeah, I sure appreciate both of you having us and uh, let's let's get out and see some games. Absolutely. Well, well we're talking about uh, great student athletes in Polk County we're actually going to have a feature for our athlete spotlight of a member of the equestrian team from Florida Southern College. Check this out Kristen you'll be right back for the fourth and final segment of Sports Central. I actually came for the swim team um, and also the psychology department um, and then I switched over to the horse gig because I liked, I liked the barn atmosphere and the horses. I took lessons when I was younger and then um, swimming kind of took over and then in my senior year I got back into horses and then I got him a few months into my freshman year so that took off my further uh, life with horses. I had been calling barns around the area to sort of see where I could potentially put my horse and I contacted Shannon and she had said, oh, you know, Florida Southern actually has an equestrian team and so she put me in touch with Marjorie and Paige, the captain and co-captain, and I started talking with them and 
um, they got me hooked. And, and the first year I said, no, I'm not gonna show, I'm not gonna do this and that. And then by the end of my freshman year, I was like getting all the show clothes and getting ready to show. So they converted me pretty quickly. With being a new sport, we've had to really make sure that we're like proving ourselves and um, showing athletics that were worth their time. Um, and they've been like super generous with us um, in trying to help us get this all started. But there's always a push to make sure that we're doing you know, everything we can to be a good team and be responsible and such so that they you know, want to keep us around and so we compete well. We have practices. Um, we have to have one lesson a week, but most people come and ride more than once a week. Um, and especially the girls with horses here will be riding here every day. We all go to the shows together and those are really fun. They're usually two day events. So we stay in a hotel um, and go to the show t uh, for two days. For the team, there's actually a social membership as well as a team membership. So for the team membership, those are the competing students typically and the students who are responsible for getting at least one lesson in a week. Um, but then the social members um, are also always welcome to come take lessons. We do um, like volunteer um, activities like volunteering at a 4-H show, so a show for the little kids um, doing like help with judging and handing out ribbons and stuff. So the social members are also a big part of the volunteering aspect of the team. I think through my college experience, I really sort of found myself once I started um, hanging out with the equestrian team girls and um, once I started having my horse here and getting to know everybody, um, I really found my group of friends. And I've also learned a lot about a completely different sport because like I said, I grew up as a swimmer and that is nothing like being an equestrian rider. So, and I think it's also like been not, being on the team um, has also given me a lot more drive as a student to make sure I'm getting good grades and um, going to classes and stuff because um, they do hold us accountable for our GPA and um, when you, you know, have a scheduled time to go to the barn every day, you have to be good with time management and make sure you get all your work done so that you can come here. So it's really changed my um, career at Florida Southern. Um, I think it, my, my college experience really, really changed in a really good way once I joined the team. This is a live animal, um, and they have their own opinions and their own will. So you can't just sort of like, you know, just hop on. And they're just—they're not just a tool. They—they they have feelings and needs. Um, so it can be hard because if they're in a grumpy mood, you might want to have a really good lesson, and they're just like, no, I would prefer not. With him, he's pretty green, which means he's not very experienced yet. So we've definitely had a record amount of falls. Um, it's pretty common for people to fall off horses. You really have to watch out for how they're feeling and what they want. He is definitely a forever friend. Um, I'll take him wherever I go. Um, and I definitely will continue with um, horses being in my life. Being on the equestrian team has really changed how I ride. It's taught me so much about riding. Like compared to what I knew before this, it was it's nothing. <laughs> so I've definitely become a much safer and more knowledgeable rider. And since I have a whole nother year and a half, I'll definitely still be learning more. So I think because of the equestrian team and because of how much I ride now, um, I'll definitely be able to ride for the rest of my life. Everybody, welcome back to the fourth and final segment of Sports Central, and this fourth segment brought to us by Contempo Vacation Homes. I didn't know they had equestrian at Florida Southern College. They did didn't you? have it when I was there. I would have done it. Just get around, ride around the horse, and I don't think it's that easy, Chris. <laughs> Do they get they get scholarships for that? Probably, right? Yeah. I, I would assume, yeah. yeah wow. Of course, Florida Southern's cool. won what thirty-one national championships, something like yeah. that. 
Maybe there's one coming in Equestrian. 32 coming up. That's right. Yep. Hey, Lakeland Flying Tigers, they're still in it in the second half of the Florida State League uh, North Division. Yeah, and we, we talked earlier in the show about being excited for football to start. That only is, there's one bad side of that. That means that baseball season's coming to a close. I think the Flying Tigers only have around 18 or 20 games left. It's yeah. hard to believe, but yeah, they are right there in it for the second half, uh, battling with the Dunedin Blue Jays right now. Uh, but they have three of their top 10 prospects with the in the Tigers organization up with the Flying Tigers right now. You've got Casey Mize, uh, who was just picked number one overall in the Major League Baseball draft mm -hmm. just about a month ago, just made his deb debut. He's from Auburn, right? Uh, yeah, Auburn? Yeah, yeah, from Auburn. Uh, yeah, Matt Manning, who's yep. their number one pick from a couple of years ago. So some really great talent to go out and watch. Uh, these guys are going to be in Detroit very soon. I mean, they are, they're retooling their uh, roster up in Detroit, kind of a rebuilding time for and them. And really, they're doing a little bit better than people anticipated. Oh yeah, yeah. They haven't. They've gone through streaks, but you know they're not going to lose 128 games like people were saying. Yeah, yeah. And it's a young team. They're they're sure. doing it right. They're Alavila's building that team the right yep. way for long term success. Uh, so I, it's going to be a fun team to watch the next few years. A lot of young players, and a lot of them we're watching right here in Lakeland. And and by the way, they do have some fun things going on at the ballpark outside of the game. All you can eat nights, right? Elvis night coming up, things like Mondays that. are dollar hot dogs. Tuesday, two dollar tacos. Wednesdays, Wednesdays, all you can eat. Thursdays, half price adult beverages. Um, Fridays, happy hour. Saturday. Uh, the fireworks and things like that, and then Sunday they do a brunch there in the 34 Club. So they literally, the entertainment value for your dollar is is uh, outstanding. Yeah, I know they like to joke uh, that when you talk to the, the people with the Flying Tigers that we work with, that you go there for the entertainment. And a baseball game just happens to be going on at, at the same time. So right. so much going on around the game. Uh, they make it a great atmosphere for the whole family. I want to remind everyone if you want to get a full list of events going on here in Central Florida's Polk County, whether it's now or upcoming, you can go to centralfloridasports.com or visit centralflorida.org. We want to invite everyone to go to the Visitor Information Center one half mile south of I-4 on Highway 27. Uh, they have so many Polk County residents, not even the visitors, but so many Polk County residents that come in there and they say, wow, I did not know that was in Polk County because it's a huge county. There's so much to see and do. You want to go to that visitor center or, or go to visitcentralflorida.org. Sure, yeah, the team up at the visitor center is ready to help anyone, whether they're a resident or visitor, uh, make, help you plan uh, all the things you want to do, whether it's a staycation or you're on vacation. Summer's wrapping up, so get right. your uh, get your tickets for Legoland Florida Resort week. and others. Yep. Uh, you get discount tickets right there as well, so they do a great job. And like you said, visitcentralflorida.org is the place to go yep. to find out all the things going on in your own backyard. Something else cool, Polk County's getting its first member into the Pro Football Hall of Fame that's actually taking place this weekend when Kathleen's Ray Lewis goes in the Hall of Fame. Of course, a lot of people have said for years, uh, not, not a slide to Ray because obviously he's deserving, but this, he should be the second one because Ken Riley from, uh, from Union yeah. Academy, from Bartow, uh, still ranks like fourth or fifth in career interceptions, but we won't go on a tangent about why. I think Ray's, uh, Ray said that himself. I Ray think. actually, yeah. yeah, there's a great article in the, the Ledger uh, covering Ray's induction talking about how Ken Riley should be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, but nonetheless, Ray Lewis going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, and then starting in September, there's going to be a special exhibit at the Polk County Sports Hall of Fame where Ray is going to con contribute some sports memorabilia of his. Uh, so there will be a, a new exhibit there, and we appreciate Ray Lewis and, and what he's doing for that. Yeah, and of course the Florida Sports Hall of, or the, the Polk County Sports Hall of Fame in Auburndale, free admission uh, yep. all the time, open uh, 9, to 4, 9 to 4, Tuesday, Tuesday through Friday. Friday. That's right. Or you call Neil, he'll let you in anytime you'd like. Just kidding. Uh, we actually, <laughs> Kelly Scott, the head coach of Weber, is actually yeah. our tour guide there at the Polk County Sports. Yeah. I'm just kidding. He's there 24 hours a day, seven days. We call Kelly Scott if you'd like to get in. <laughs> <laughs> but no, for real, the, uh, the Polk County Sports Hall of Fame, free admission, uh, and the new Ray Lewis exhibit, among many, many other things. Uh, to check out there some great sports memorabilia from yep. throughout Polk County. Once again, congratulations to Ray. Some sponsors we'd like to thank, Country Club of Winter Haven, Hampton Inn Bartow, The Trophy Shop, Contempo Vacation Homes, and Cypress Lanes. We'd like to thank them and we'd like to thank you for watching, uh, but these sponsors allow us to assist us to do what we need to do to bring in sports and special events and tr tourism into Polk County. I want to remind everybody, go to centralfloridasports.com for a full list of events or give us a call at 863-551-4750. The next edition of Sports Central will come live to you on Friday, August 17th. And of course, 
every week there's re-airings. I think it's 12 re-airings of Sports Central each week. Uh, so you get to see Chris and I 23 more times before that August 17th show. Uh, but it was a fun show. College football is back. It's uh, high school football is three weeks away. College football is a little bit more than a month away. Got to be excited about it. I think there's only a couple weekends left where we will not have football to watch, so that's always a good thing. And, uh, yeah, it was a good show. We enjoyed having all those coaches on. Absolutely. Well, for Chris Caprios, I'm Neil Duncan. You can catch us on the radio version of Sports Central on Talk 96.7 every Tuesday and Thursday. But for now, we'll catch you again next time.